Chapter 5, Basic Principles of Operant Conditioning. Part 1, E.L. Thorndike and the Law of Effect. At the turn of the 20th century, about a decade before Pavlov and his students became interested in conditioned reflexes, Edward Lee Thorndike was the first psychologist to use the systematic empirical approach of psychological experimentation pioneered by Hermann Ebbinghaus in the 1880s to study animal intelligence. Thorndike built puzzle boxes that required a specific response or specific sequence of responses to open the door to the box. For example, there's a treadle inside this puzzle box. If something inside the box were to step on the treadle, the latch would release and the door would open. Thorndike would place a small animal, most famously kittens, but also uh, dogs and chickens inside the box and then some food outside the box. He would time how long it took the animal to make the required response and get out of the puzzle box to receive its food. He put the same animal in the same uh, puzzle box over many trials so that they could learn what response would open the puzzle box. And so in these experiments, his independent variable was the amount of previous experience the animal had measured in number of trials. And his dependent variable was the amount of time it took to open the box on each trial. Thorndike wanted to find out whether animals learned to open the puzzle boxes using insight or trial and error. He reasoned that if animals were insightful, it might take them many trials to figure out what's the deal with the puzzle box. And during those trials, they wouldn't open the box at all. When they maxed out the time limit, uh, Thorndike would then take them out of the box himself to end the trial. Eventually, the animal would figure it out, and from that point on, because they'd figured it out, it would then open the box immediately on every trial from then on. So, if the animal used insight to learn how to open the puzzle box, the graph of time to open the box, the dependent variable, as a function of number of trials, the independent variable, would look like the yellow line. On the other hand, if the animal learned to open the box by trial and error, Thorndike predicted a gradual change in how long it took the animal to open the box. Most of the time, the results were consistent with trial and error learning, a gradual decrease in the time to open the box. Thorndike interpreted this gradual decrease as a strengthening of the SR, or stimulus response, connection. The stimulus was the inside of the puzzle box. The response was whatever opened the box. Recall that classical conditioning in uh, chapters three and four is all about SS or stimulus stimulus connections. When you introduce a CS, it provides information about a US, for example, that the US is about to occur, and it elicits a corresponding uh, CR or conditioned response. The change in behavior is a reaction to a stimulus change, the introduction of the CS. Now you can get different kinds of classical conditioning like excitatory versus inhibitory or strengthening versus weakening by adding or removing a CS or by changing whether the CS signals that the US is more or less likely. But regardless, classical conditioning requires some kind of stimulus change. In Thorndike's experiments, there are no stimulus changes. The puzzle box stays as it is. Whether the cat is inside the box or outside the box depends only on the cat's own behavior, right? Whether the cat emits the required response. So what does it mean to strengthen the SR connection? Simply that the next time the cat is in the same situation, in the presence of the same stimulus or stimuli, he will be more likely to do whatever he was doing around the time the box opened last time. That will certainly include the required response, but it will probably include other things as well, and all of those things will become more likely. The reason trial and error learning works is that although the other behaviors will vary from trial to trial, the required response will occur on every trial. So that response, and only that response, will be strengthened on every trial. Eventually, that means that the animal should emit that response pretty regularly. 
That is Thorndike's law of effect. If a response is followed by a satisfying state of affairs, to use Thorndike's term, the strength of the connection is increased when the situation recurs. In his experiments, the response was stepping on a treadle, pulling a rope, or something like that. The satisfying state of affairs is the opening of the puzzle box and the presentation of the saucer of milk or whatever type of food it was. And the situation that recurs uh, is on the next trial when Thorndike puts the animal back in the box. Additional evidence supporting the law of effect comes from work by Guthrie and Horton. They created a kind of puzzle box that was opened by moving a type of joystick, and this joystick could be moved in any direction. Guthrie and Horton observed different cats move the joystick in lots of different ways. They could bite it, push it, or pull it with different parts of their bodies. However, once a cat successfully opened the puzzle box a particular way, that particular response became more and more likely. For example, these 24 pictures are based on photographs of the cat subject B's position at the moment of reinforcement, so when the puzzle box opened, from the first 24 trials for that cat in the puzzle box. At first, there's some variation in the cat's position, but from about the 15th trial on, subject B consistently kind of nudges the joystick in a very particular way. This variability in response across cats and consistency in responses from individual cats illustrates what Brown and Herrnstein called the stop action principle. The precise movements that are performed at the moment of reinforcer delivery are the ones that will be strengthened and will be more likely to occur in the future. 